Okay, I think we've got a pretty good feel for just the basics of our game, so let's start, start making it a little more representative of how we want it to look. Let's start kind of making this stuff look a little nicer. Change this bullet for starter. Add some light colors to it. It adds blues. Blues might look really nice. I really like the way this like kind of teal blue looks with the white. You can actually change the colors here. Transition into our like teal color, so it's not too harsh. You gotta be careful because you might be adding a lot of effort into something that nobody even sees. Something that you kind of want to be careful about. Like if nobody's ever going to see it, it might not be worth doing. So, and I'll show you a little secret. It's one of my favorite things to do. Hit duplicate layer. Okay, and then this bottom one. Go to effects and hit blur up to like apply and now it's got like this little glow around it watch what happens when we shoot now it just looks a little nicer right got a slight glow it looks a little bit cooler got a little more personality Looks really good with that one. I really like the way it looks with the fan. We need to change. Anyway, that's just something you can do to make things look a little nicer. Let's go ahead and change the player. Let's really make the player look like something, you know? This, actually a little secret, you can just hit remove color, boom, white. We chose white, so it's all gone. So when you're using pixel art, you really want to have an interesting silhouette more than anything else. That's what's most readable. Details on the inside are going to get lost uh, in the action. It's going to look crazy. Details on the inside make something look really good, but we're most concerned about the silhouette. So what we can do here is just Try to create something that's kind of interesting. I'm actually going to be referencing a picture that I made before. Just to make this process a little faster. Okay, got a pretty neat little silhouette there. Let's just use the select tool. You can hit S or you can choose it right there. Hit copy. And now we can actually paint with it, which is weird. It's not like a stamp, it's actually a brush now. Hit Y to change the Y axis on it. Now all of a sudden we have a complete ship. Hit F or choose the bucket. We're going to turn it gray. We're going to give it, oh, we'll go back to our original brush. We're going to give it a little cockpit. We're going to use different shades of gray to make it look a little more interesting. So the back end of it, we're going to make very dark, and this gun, we're going to make very dark. Okay, I've actually pumped this out a little further, huh? Give this a of a gray. Back. Cover all the way here. Back there. We'll, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the burner. The burner thing, you know, on the plane. The burners. A little bit of.
Okay. That's looking pretty good, huh? Just go ahead and copy. Turn it over. Let's be efficient, you know? Why not? This some depth. We're just going to... Right. By the way, I'm holding the control key, and that's your eyedropper that picks colors, whatever. So you can see over here the color changes based on what, I, what I'm clicking on. Now we've got, like, an honest-to-goodness ship. You know, it looks like an actual airplane. And it has actual bullets. Let's see how this looks. Much, much better. Yeah. This looks more like a space shooter. If you want, you could make it so that it's, uh, you know, on, on its side instead of top down. Uh, I think this one gives you kind of a cooler silhouette by looking down on top of it. That's just my personal preference. We're going to do one more thing before we go with this lesson. And we're going to create a new sprite. Get our grid on so we can see where the middle is. We're going to just create a little afterburner. It's going to be this little ball. We're going to create a few more frames. And this turns on the onion skin. Onion skin is a reference to how transparent and thin onions are. And when we go to the next frames, it shows us in degrading transparency what the last frame was. But we want that one. We want one that's real flat. Almost comically so. It's going to be first frame. It's going to be this. And then it's going to be really elongated. That's just going to create kind of some life to it. Get rid of this last frame. I don't think we need four frames. So, right click on it. Right click on it. Say duplicate layers. And this bottom one, effects, blur. So, you know what? We're going to bring both of these. Hot one. So you're gonna bring it back a little bit. Okay, this is the point where we want it. So three pixels from the back. See why here in a minute. I want this to look nice. The effects blur. Add a couple pixels worth of blur to it. You can choose Gaussian or Box. I like Gaussian, Gaussian, I'm not sure. I like Gaussian. Apply to all frames. And here you can like apply it to everything. We don't want to do that. We just want the selected layer, but to all frames. Apply. And all three have that glow. That'll give your that's what's gonna give your plane some thrust. So S afterburner. Create an object. Oh, afterburner. Like the sprite. We're going to say it's going to be an end step. Its X is going to be O player. My dot dot X minus eight. And Y is going to be O 
player dot y. So the same y coordinates, but minus eight. I'm gonna go back to there. Actually, it sits forward three pixels any, so let's just subtract five from that. Okay, minus five. But because the afterburner is dependent on the player to be there, we need to start getting in the habit of doing this. If instance exists, O player. Y equals O player dot uh, X equals O player dot X minus five. Y equals O player dot Y. It's saying the condition that has to be met for this is that the player exists. Then we can follow the player. Otherwise, it'll just crash if the player were to die or something. And then if it doesn't exist, we're going to say else instance destroy because obviously without the plane we don't need an afterburner let's hit play i forgot to add it to the room so we're going to say player in the create event of the player instance create layer x y is O afterburner. We're actually going to go ahead and say create it minus five. So when the ship is created, it's going to create the afterburner. I've got the measurements off. What is that? Be right there right because of the origin point oh that looks a little better put it back just scooch it back just a bit there we go now we've got a player that can shoot as an afterburner and it's working over time we've got different weapons and power-ups and enemies to kill this is really shaping up this is turning into an actual game got a score we've got 105 points look at that pretty good huh and real quick as a little bonus we'll get to it later save it we'll pick it up in the next lesson it'll be a short one